right, here we go. Um, I got the trusty ear uh, protection on today. Because, you know, when you're playing Bonham, you need air protection. Because, uh, you know, he's a little bit of a heavy hitter, in case you didn't notice. Um, that's not the only reason, but the drums sound better. I don't know if you've ever tried this at home, but if you got the, the old-fashioned over-the-ear big headphones, when you put those on and you're playing regular drums, it really gives it kind of this muffled studio sound, if you like that sound, which I do. So uh, not only does it sound good when you put these on, but it also protects your ears from all those high overtones. Okay, so... Uh, we're here at the Displaying School of Music drum studio, which we don't get a chance to use that much because there's kids playing in these rooms and they really frown on that because uh, it's a little loud. But on a uh, Sunday afternoon, I could sit down and make a video. Uh, have, a stu uh, have a student, Big Joe Soretti, he's uh, kind of legendary throughout the Displaying School of Music. And Big Joe is trying to work on the ending of rock and roll, which we had in our boot camp, which for all the people who went to the boot camp, um, we all had a good time, and for those who didn't go to the boot camp, you missed out on a good time. But there's always the fall, because I'm, from what I understand, um, there's a, uh, a, a sort of a, uh, a line of people that are just so excited about the drum camp that they're on the waiting list for the fall boot camp. And a matter of fact, there might be someone at the door right now just waiting. I, I, there's just, a, uh, you know, the word of mouth is uh, overwhelming. But anyway, or they'll just be the five guys or six guys that normally do it. You know, it's one of the two. I just, I just don't know. Okay, so the ending to rock and roll. Here we go. So I did this because we did this Bonham Pert thing, and uh, everyone likes the ending of rock and roll, but it's a little convoluted and weird, and you can't really find a good transcription of it because I don't think there is one because I don't think Bonham, I think he just kind of won it, and um, he kind of played whatever, and it's not maybe not really in time exactly, and there's just kind of this looseness to it. But anyway, it's a combination of 16th note triplets and that bottom sweep thing. So we'll try to talk you through it uh, the best we can without making it a 30-minute uh, video, which I have a tendency to do sometimes. Okay, but enough of that. So here's the, here's the beginning. The beginning's pretty easy. I think we could all do that. Okay. After he does that, actually, let me play it first. Let me play it first. Okay. That's basically it. Um, so, the beginning. That's the first part. And then he does this little rough. Right? So, if you eliminate the rough, put the rough in, I'm not saying to eliminate the rough, I'm just saying that that's the, the sticking sort of for it without the rough. With the rough. Okay. So from there, you repeat that uh, little stroke there. So then you come down. You could think of it as kind of like a three, four, and three and a four. And I don't know if it's on beat three. I don't know if it's on beat four. But it's just something to think in your head. So. And that part, I say three and a four end, because that's the end of that sort of section. And then we move on to the bottom sweeps, okay? So the first section. And I would suggest playing the sticking I'm playing, because it works better for the, the, the bottom sweeps, and then the 16th note triplet thing he does at the end of it. So again... After that, he does six of these bottom sweeps, which is just snare, tom, tom, kick. Okay? 
it's kind of a famous thing that he does. And uh, we worked on him extensively in the boot camp, uh, which you all really should have been at. And if you weren't, then you probably don't know about the bottom sweeps, which is why you should have been at the boot camp. Okay, bottom sweeps again. I like to think of them as one ta ta and the first three notes of the 16th note triplet followed by an eighth note. However, he plays them a little differently um, because he doesn't wait for it to evolve to play like one and, two and, two and, two and, two and he plays them quicker. So he starts the riff earlier than on the second beat. But all that is unnecessary. Too much counting, too much figuring. Just listen for this because believe me, he wasn't sitting there going one to the and, two to the and, one and, two and. He was just playing. So some things are just worth listening to, figuring out, playing. It's hard to to put note values on everything. So, um, so that the second part are the, the bottom sweeps. Okay, and I like the Buddy Rich version of this snare floor tom thing. I don't know if Bonham did it, but if Buddy did it, uh, I wanna say it's worth doing. Okay. So, instead of moving your hand, Just move your hand this way, it's a lot less work, and it's actually, I think, ends up being quicker. Buddy did it all the time. So that's the sweep. You do six of those. Then the hard part. So that's the second part. First part. Second part, third part is the t part that really messes with everybody. I, I, I know pretty good drummers who, for some reason, can never get this part. Um, they could do the sweeps in their sleep and they could play everything, but that transition from this part to the 16th note triplet part is a problem. And it might be a problem because he leads with his left hand, which is just something naturally I do, as many of my students know is that I lead these kind of groupings of triplets with my left. I don't lead with my right, and a lot of people lead with their right. Uh, a matter of fact, probably most people do. But from what I understand, Bonham didn't for this particular riff. He, he actually led with his left, and maybe he always did. I don't know. But for this riff, it works out better because of where your hands are set up. So again, the Bonham sweeps. Like this, followed by the triplets. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, four strokes at the end, and then another sweep. So again, this part So you go between the floor tom and the and the and the high tom here and the snare. four times on the snare, I don't remember. Um, either way it works, sounds good. Um, okay, so bottom sweep. And then a cymbal crash. Okay. And that's the hardest part. You can work on it slow. Again, sweep. Uh, let me do, no editing. Let me do that again. Okay. First part.
second part, the sweeps. Third part, the triplet. I guess there's a fourth part, but I'm making it the third part. Fourth part is the four strokes. And then another sweep. So let's make that four parts. The first part. The second part, the sweeps. Third part, triplet. Fourth part, four strokes. Another sweep. All together. Ah! One more time. You think Bonham made a mistake when he was doing this in the, in the studio? You think he went, ah! And then they had to do it over? I don't know. I guess we'll never know. I guess he could have. I just did. So I guess he could have too. Okay, let's try it again. One more time. I did that different that time. I started on the snare and not the tom. I like the way that sounds, but I don't think that's how he did it. One more time. Okay, so there it is. Rewind it. Make it slow or whatever, you know, the... That was with the uh, rock and roll uh, groove.